Do you fuck with Troy and Jerry? And Jerry, 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 Jerry. Of course I do, you fool. What about you? Do you fuck with Troy and Jerry? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry? Oh boy, I love this show. Does anyone else here fuck with Troy and Jerry? Jerry, Jerry. I love this so, so much. Is it time to start yet? Let's start the show. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, hey. All day long. All How day long. What's up, Troy? How you doing there, Jerry? Good, man. Happy Friday, baby. Happy Friday. Woo woo. Good to see you, man. Ooh. Good to see you, too. You didn't see yeah. it. I was running around. I had to swap my grinders and figure out some things to grind and yeah, all that good stuff. Right on. Right on. Ready, ready for a Friday. Bro, tell me about it. Let's let's uh, let's grind and vape something, man. What are you sporting today? Um, I I got my screwball on right now. I've been I've been relying on the screwball lately. I, I've been finding that, that I really like how agile that that vape is. Mm -hmm. Like you know how we we talk about how the ones with the metal bowl and the diffuser have the added conduction for like a little stonier hit. Yeah, I find that with the screwball, if I just put the head on there and vape it right away, mm -hmm. it's not all that stony. Like it gets it gets the bowl hot, but it doesn't make it super pre soaked. However, if you put the screwball on the on that bowl and let it sit for 30 seconds or so, 30, 40 seconds, hey, it cooks and you get like a really deep roast and a really stony high and a really punchy hit. So, yeah, I, I, I really like how uh, responsive it is to that to that pre-soak or no pre-soak right i uh i kind of go a, a, a different but similar route where i'll throw it on there and hit it right away and get the real good taste and then <clears throat> i'll just let it sit on there until i've taken like three hits and by the third hit it's it's fully roasted and done what i've started to do though because you know troy i like these these ball vape hits but you know i also miss my her herborizer and the 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 dance with the flavors and so i keep trying to uh, accomplish that with a ball vape and um now i'm starting to just take these little five to six second half hits with my screwball and then take the head off right away and the head's only on while i hit it and i can get a good three or four really good small tasty hits and avoid that whole you know the spent taste that a lot of people try to not not get up against yeah the popcorn that everybody complains about yeah so i've had a good time with it man i've used the screwball a lot like it's uh we were talking earlier about ball vapes and how you know we have so many but there aren't a lot of them that have owned the desktop so to speak for us you know what i mean and, and this is one of the few that has just kind of stayed on the desk bro <laughs> yeah yeah this and, and the the wireless the, the mary and the turp hammer uh, they have stayed here uh and honestly when i was when i was in love with the wireless and i'm still in love with the wireless yeah, I couldn't imagine going back to a corded, but having both here handy has has proven to be nice. And mm. now that I'm 
over the honeymoon of the cordless, mm-hmm. I can see the the difference and or the benefit where some people may still want to have a corded ball vape. Right. You know, some of those people that are sticklers for the power and sticklers for the the blackened roasting. Like mm-hmm. the corded the corded uh screwball and, and even the, the cannabis hardware lineup for that matter can do those pre soak soaked style conduction roasts more effectively than their cordless counterparts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's no denying that. Yeah, I like I mean I, I would take my my hammer, my turp hammer, and do the same thing where I would just throw it in there and take three or four hits. But between every hit, I would throw it back in the in the heater just to kind of keep it at that. You know what I mean? Because by the time you get to the second or third, you will notice a little bit. So I'm with you on that, man. Um, I still adore the cordless. Uh, but that's mostly because I'm not like, you know, I, I think the last year or two, I haven't been chasing the high end. You know what I mean? I've been real happy in the middle taste zone and that middle temp zone and not trying to, to, to crush the end of it and get everything black. So for me, a cordless thing kind of hits exactly what I'm looking for anyhow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to work a little more. Well, the that's the thing though is is that the ability that the corded can do that the cordless can't do is kind of the extreme version of it. You know, like when I'm hitting the haze and doing a pre soak with the Mary, which is cordless, it absolutely pre soaks and it absolutely makes a stonier hit. Mm-hmm. Is it as much as the corded could do? No, but it's usually enough. You know, mm-hmm. right now I'm obviously min maxing and stretching things out, but right on, man. Well, I say we hit one of these fuckers, man. I've I've, I've just ground my herb. I didn't pack it yet. A new grinder? You want to see my new grinder? Yeah. Oh, they got a big one now. My only Zams are the little skinny, long things. This is a this is a new one. This is a a, a new their new version. Uh, this one is stainless steel. They also have an aluminum version, but look how short these little teeth are. Yeah, what's up, and man? It's a little chamber. Notice how there's no center post. Mm-hmm. The center post is actually a tooth. Yeah. Yeah. Is and it uh, magnetic or no? It's it's magnetic and it's threadless. Oh, where's the magnets on this motherfucker? The magnets are in the rim. Nicely done, bro. I've seen some 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 early models of, of some of these things that they put little columns in the thing and that's where the magnet sits. And that just fucks up getting your weed out. So I'm glad to see this guy didn't do that. That's great. Yeah, it's decent. It's decent. Uh, I'm optimistic about it. I've been testing it for a few days. A couple little things that uh, annoy me a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. But no, no major complaints at this point yet. You know, if anybody's been watching the Zam Grinder release. How's the grind, bro? How's the grind? Well, let's let me grind some shit, and then I'll tell you. All right. Hello, this is Betty White. You need some time to grind. All right, we're gonna hit this thing here. Is that what we're gonna do? You gotta, you gotta give me a moment. Now I gotta grind some shit. Now I gotta grind some shit. Now I gotta grind some shit. Now I gotta. What strain you got? Pink strummer and gelata. Now I gotta grind some. I just pulled out a nug, dude. Now I gotta grind some. Now I gotta grind some. Now I gotta grind some shit. Let me grind one up. Yeah, that's so much. That is the best, man. I want to play that every time I grind, even like just on my own. I should do that. Just have that on like play, like on my stream deck or something. Huh, I'm going to vape. <laughs> it is too short. I think all these things are too short. The music on is banging. Too short. Like the rap artist. You ever listen to too short? No. You know, what's amazing, me. Jerry. I've been, I've been rocking this, uh, this pie cream, And I, I noticed that like when you first grind it, it's really gassy. Mm-hmm. And then after it sits in the grinder for like an hour or two, it turns into like grapes and cream. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, dude. And uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've had herbs where like they smell different after they dry, they dry out a little bit, but man, this one is like noticeably it's gassy when it's fresh ground. 
and then grape cream on on the cool down. I love it. I love that, man. Is this the uh, the new the new pie cream? This is the yeah. This is the new pie cream. Because I uh, just, I actually found pie. some old pie cream and just finished it off the other day. I was like, oh, no way. And so now I am, uh, this is the last of it, actually. And then after that, I'm going to go back to what's left of my Jealous Runts. Uh, the Jealousy Runts is, yeah. is, is the strongest stuff I've come across in a while. Like, I, I've i reached for that when I need to go down. <laughs> Yo, I, I've been the same way. I, I even got to that point where I had a couple nugs left. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to save this because it's so strong. Mm -hmm. And uh when I was re-watching, I was actually vaping on that shit, and I was re-watching the stream from two weeks ago with Rob, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how he went from eight blunts a day to four blunts a day with the vape, and right. with, the, with the vape, he finds himself getting too high with the vape, like he, he finds himself nice. over overdoing it, Yeah, and I'm like, like I could totally see that, like, especially with this super strong jealousy runs shit, by the way, the way. Oh, Ready to rock this code Troy and Jerry? We'll save you 10% at Vavana. That's right. Well, cheers. If you like what you see, you get a discount. Actually, I'm gonna preheat. Chris is on his way. Mr. Grow is on his way. Oh, Remember sweet. Jerry, Jerry, you told him 615 when we talked, and that was what he wrote down. So no worries. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we were uh we were talking earlier, guys, about uh because Chris isn't in the studio yet, so we're like, well, what are we going to do if he doesn't make it? <laughs> so that's good news. We don't have to make up something on the fly here for you guys. We'll actually have Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I uh, I got some new uh, equipment this week, man. You remember? Do you remember at the end of the last show, last stream, my mic stand broke or whatever the fuck? So, uh, yep. <laughs> I got a new one of those. Got a new keyboard, got a new mouse I haven't installed yet. So, yeah, baby. I don't think so. You didn't combust on there. Nah, he's just taking big motherfucking hits. You gonna show us the leftovers, man? That was a sure, bro. That mess. wasn't combustion. That was just like a, <laughs> the, uh... yeah, that's as far uh... as you can go, though. That's done, mm. bitches. No, it's got one more hand in there, Jerry. No, let's go. Put, that away. Put that away. <laughs> You don't want what that's going to taste like. Yes, I do. I can't believe that Florida Jer is telling California Troy that he's vaping his shit too far. Uh, <laughs> that's a switch, brother. Fucking long riot, dude. I'm having a long riot. Right? We need a long riot song, Emily. That would be dude. dope. <laughs> it's got to be metal. Oh, there's Chris. Chris Let's is down there. Hey, what's up, Chris? You want to come in for a ride? Want to come join us? Hey. What's up, what's up? timing, Chris? I just, what's up? You guys hear me all right? Yeah, yes. I hear you fine, man. Can you hear Troy trying to get through that hit there? <laughs> <laughs> trying to find some air. I just took a big, big old hit. Welcome, yeah. Chris, a.k.a. Yeah. Mr. Grow It. Hey, Mr. thanks for having me. House. Great to have you. <laughs> Chris, you've been... You've been making content oh. in all kinds of formats. And uh, you're probably best known for uh, Mr. Grow It, growing, growing Weed. And you've got books on Amazon. You've got podcasts. Can you tell me how you got started? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I guess cannabis in general got started when I was 12 years old. Oh. <laughs> you know, smoking. Just uh, my sister, first time I ever consumed, she's like, come out into the backyard. And then uh, it was her and her friend. Her friend rolled up a joint, and that's back when it was just brick weed. And so yeah. uh, I remember smoking brick weed, 12 years old. And then uh, I didn't get lit for my first time. It took me like four or five times until I actually really? got lit. Yeah. Did you uh, feel anything? People. <laughs> I didn't feel anything at all. No. I mean, maybe a little calming, but like not stoned, you know? And um uh, wow. Anyways, ever since then, I was just, I've been smoking and started growing back in 2010. And then uh, 2015 is really when my first YouTube video came out that related to cannabis cultivation. And then just continue making videos. I always kind of had a 
a passion for filming for the most part and editing a little bit used to like film my friends doing dumb things back in the day and, and edit little yeah. compilation videos and, and show them. And, um, so then kind of looking on YouTube and seeing all these creators, you know, 20, 2012, 2013, 2014, watching these creators, I, I didn't even know it was a thing. You know, I didn't even know it was allowed mm. to show off your grow. And so I was inspired to create my own content. And then 2015 came 2016, 2017, I had a channel shut down, launched another channel. Now I have three different channels and a couple podcasts and a couple books. Damn. And yeah, so I've done a lot since, uh, since then, but it's, it's been crazy. Wow. So you got deleted as well. Yeah. I got deleted in 2017. So that, uh, that big That's purge, right. yep. I think I got deleted like a little bit before the big purge. Um, okay. it was mostly because I was promoting seeds. So YouTube made it really clear that, you know, you can't promote seeds anymore. Um, at least where to get them and also dispensaries, I guess you're not supposed to promote any of that stuff. So they shut down my channel, um, shut down a thousand other people. This was like back in 2017, 2018, there was a massive purge. And then they brought all these channels back out of nowhere. Um, and then a lot, of came back. Break at that time. a lot of people didn't come back at that time. I came back about three to five months after I got my channel back randomly. Everybody got the channel back just out of the blue with no explanation. <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, I just continue making, making content from there. Well, that's sick. I'm glad you got your channel back. Yeah. I, I got my channel back. Suckers. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough, man. You guys know how YouTube is. What were yeah. you, what were you doing as a career before the content? Um, so I worked at amazon.com for, I guess, I don't, I don't know why I say .com. I was like, used to yeah. say .com back then, but now it's just Amazon, right? So right. <laughs> for Amazon for uh, for eight years, actually started as like a picker packer shipper, worked my way up to management and then was working kind of worldwide operations. Um, and one of the departments they had, um, which is called warehouse deals. And uh, it's kind of like if you return an item, Yep. they'll grade that item and then put it, sell it, resell it. So I was kind of mm -hmm. working in that area, kind of supporting worldwide launches throughout different countries and stuff like that. So um, that was pretty cool, but it was so it's just a burnout, you know what I mean? Working 10, 12 hour days, six, seven days a week. It's, it was expected for you to go home at the end of the shift and then open up your laptop and continue working. Oh, for you know what I mean? So it was like yeah, pretty you. stressful. So I got out of there in 2015 um, actually, before Amazon, I was a real estate agent for like a year, barely sold, barely sold much. It was 2008 where the real estate was just at the rock bottom, you know, so it was a bad okay. time to get in. Um, oh, no, you got in in 08? Yeah. <laughs> you ain't shit. It's not a worse year to get into real estate. <laughs> Terrible time. <laughs> and you've always been yeah, in the Vegas fine. area? What's that? And you've always been in the Las Vegas area? No, I grew up in Boston area. So right outside okay. of Boston, about 15 minutes north, a town called Bill Ricca, right next to Lowell. It was kind of a big, I guess, been a lot of movies, so you might recognize mm -hmm. Lowell. Um, but lived there for 26 years and then moved out to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I was in Allentown for a little bit, which is about an hour north of Philly, and uh, spent some time there and then came over to Vegas and been in Vegas for the past 13 years. Now. Come up on 13 years. Wow. Time flies. So, okay. Yeah. 13 years in Vegas, baby. You like it? That makes sense. Yeah. So you you started doing the the weed shit when you got to Vegas. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. 2010. Really growing as far as growing. I was actually in Pennsylvania for a year, and then I went to um, 2011 is really when I came to Vegas, and then yeah, I've been growing ever since. Yeah, so, that, that's they have funny. a medical program here, which uh, so we we became rec in 2016. And uh, before that, it well. was just medical. <laughs> so you had to get a medical card in order to register with the state in order to grow. So that's what I did. And now I'm grandfathered in technically. So I'm allowed to grow up to 12 plants. So that's how uh -huh. it kind of works in, in my state. The way uh, really, if you're in Las Vegas area, you're 21 or older, you can only, you can't grow. You can only grow if you have a medical card. Or um, other people in the state, if you're a, a, more than 25 miles away from a dispensary, then you're allowed to grow. So hmm. being like the rural areas in Nevada, for example. Uh, but yeah, their laws are kind of weird in that sense. Yikes. That kind of sucks. I didn't I didn't realize that. I, I thought that they had a, a loose 
recreational law. Well, 26, yeah, 2016, they became rec. And then, yeah, for, as far as growing, I mean, they want you to spend money at the dispensaries, right? They want the, those tax dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember coming to Vegas when they, when they finally went legal. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> we definitely want to have the shows there now. That's the ticket. <laughs> yeah. I remember the, the first year going to Vegas and going to the dispensary and buying like one of everything. And everything was kind of trashy and being <laughs> really mad about it. There's a bunch of terrible weed here. Bunch yeah. Yeah. A lot of terrible stuff. You know, the, the, the problem is these dispensaries don't know how to store it properly. Mm. So they're storing it in room temperature, right? Yeah. We know that good storage is going to be lower than that. A lot of people mm. store around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and of course, being humidity controlled as well in order to keep it fresh. A lot of these dispensaries aren't doing that. And especially transferring from where it was grown, the truck ride, to where it goes, right? It's like just mm -hmm. a hot truck. It's like your terpenes mm -hmm. are just being lost oh, there. So it's, yeah. it's pretty bad. You know, a lot of people come here and they're like, the weed's terrible. But yeah. um, desert weed. Go to desert. A knows how to store it. And desert you also have to know some farms around here that are really good, like Green Life Productions. Shout out to them. They're in Pahrump, which is right next door. They, um, they have some really quality stuff. They're living soil grown. And um, I always look for them at the dispensary when I'm here. Oh, yeah. Very nice. I'm going to hit you up next time we're going to Vegas uh, for two reasons. One, so we can sesh together and yeah. two, uh, to tell me what to good, what's good to buy at the dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. Oh, dang. You ready to hit that thing? Is that what you're pulling out? <clears throat> yeah, I'm pulling this out. So uh, I got the extension here. I remember last time we seshed, I had to bring out this big, I don't know, it was an 18-inch bong or something like that. Hey. And I'm like, man, I wish I had something that connected to the 14 millimeter here and i've got this actually came with the screwball is this component here i don't know if they if they have as an add-on or what but they gave me this as well and then uh, i've got the top here and then i'm going to pack it up right on. nice i'm hitting yeah. sloppy seconds here so let me <laughs> i'm packing a freshie myself so i was uh that. just finished smoking a blunt before i connected with you guys very nice that's, that's the way to rob, start off rob from cannabis uh, lifestyle tv was here and uh, we had a little blunt sesh, so that's convenient. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see Rob in a few minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nine thirty sharp. Uh, whether we're mid sentence or not, uh, the um, the Planet of the Vapes, uh, searching for Planet of the Vapes episode is going to kick off. And um, well, we we're excited to have you in it. Thanks for thanks for playing your role. You you were really good. I'm in it too. <laughs> yeah, somehow you you have made an appearance already. Uh, I'm looking forward. I, I, I just want to say this is the best one I've ever seen. <laughs> no, I don't want to set the bar really high or anything, but I almost died watching it <laughs> by choking on a cough drop. I'm just gonna just gonna. Say that. <laughs> That's great. I've been pre-soaking, and we gotta hit this thing. So gotta hit this thing. Oh, let's go in, dude. This this jealousy. Oh, his vape wasn't even on. Was your vape not on? I have to turn it on. Oh, oh my yeah. God. So I gotta wait. You guys, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't wait. wait for me. I'll, yeah, I'll, we're I'll, watch Troy. I'll hit it hard I'm enough prepared. for both of us. Troy will blaze the path. He'll blaze the path. I'm hitting the jealousy runs right now. The uh, the stuff we had a couple weeks ago from uh, Snow Till, and it's amazing. I'm stoked to have a little bit left. Nice. I fucking love this grinder, man. I don't work to grind my weed, man. I fidget spin that shit away. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's pretty cool. You just spin it like that? I've never even seen that. It's fucking amazing, bro. Like, I remember when I first got it, I was like, oh, I didn't use it for a month. I just played with it as a fidget spinner, and I was afraid to put weed in it because I thought it'll instantly gunk up, and it has never gunked up. Like, it is the easiest grinder to use. The The grind is average, but the 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 ease of use is off the charts. So wow, I fucking love it, and it's fun, man. I, I'm a, I'm a OCD fidgety motherfucker, so this is good for me. Yeah, I'm to send me a link to that. I have to grab one of those. Yeah, for right. sure. We'll do for sure. I'm working on a collab with that with that grinder. Uh, I'm going to create some art for the top of it to be etched in. Oh, dude, I want. Let me know when that's available. I'm on. I'm on for that sure. list. Dude, did you see the charcoal art that I did the other day? Yes, that was fucking cool, man. I loved it. It was 100% made was out so of cool. cannabis. Right? And and it, and it reminded me of, of, of the journey we took. It was great, dude. Like, the whole thing was... Yeah. That was cool as shit. So, 
Chris, I, I took my harvested cannabis plants, like the branches, the the, the sticks and shit. Yeah. Wrapped them in tinfoil real tight and threw them in my charcoal grill. So they, they turned to charcoal themselves. And then I, I got artistic and drew some shit. Like oh, nice. with, with the vine charcoal made out of cannabis and uh, yeah, it's drew cool. a little little trichome scene. <laughs> it's super it's cool. Fun. You're walking down the the forest in there, man. That was that was cool as shit. I fucking dug it. Well, so YouTube has been so strict on me and my content. Like I can't cheers. say the word vape or cheers, man. Like cheers. I can't I can't show weed, I can't show vapes, I can't show myself vaping. Otherwise, it gets age restricted. I can't show plants. It's uh, it's it's they're so tight with me, and uh, I I decided I needed to like throw off their their algorithm a bit and just like really start putting some creative videos out there. So literally, I'm getting getting creative with it. That's dope. I loved what you did, oh man. Awesome. One minute until the double feature. So this is gonna take like a few minutes. Grab your popcorn. Yeah, yeah, it's five or six minutes long, I think. I'll give it away, but yeah. <laughs> Too late, bro. I just did. What are you talking about? And now we just wait silently. Yeah, because we don't want to be caught mid sentence. Ever since we made the rule, you can cut us off with this thing. We like are always like waiting. Like, where's it? Where's it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for like a minute and a half before it starts, we're all just like quiet and wait. <laughs> Might as well just fucking start it early. As soon as we fuck up. Right, just man. waiting. <laughs> Is it nine thirty yet? <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Oh, that was geez. These hits are insane, bro. Like, or... I'm perfectly high for it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Me too, man. Me too. Any... Troy? What is this place? Jerry, I think we're stuck inside a black hole. Blip blop blip bloppity blippity blop blip. The ship isn't responding to any commands. This is very non-chill, Jerry. Very non-chill. <laughs> Jerry, is that a screwball? I've never seen one in the wild. My god, Troy, I think it is. Oh wait, they're hailing us? Troy and Jerry, what the hell are you doing inside this black hole? Is that Rob? Hell yeah, it's Blunt Robert. Please don't call me Blunt Robert. Blunt Robert, there's no time for fooling around. Our ship has lost power. The oxygen is about to run out. Please help us. No, stop it. I told you that's not my name. Just stop it, or you'll never get onto my rocket. Yeah, sure, I'm a big-ass blunt, and I'm smoking on a blunt right now. But it's time for me to cut back. I need to be there for my kid. Blunt, Robert, this ain't no time to rebrand. You're a blunt as big as a man. Respect for health, but we need your help. We're in a gooey jam. I'll beam you up, but I need you to show some respect, y'all. I need you to call me Robbie Balls. I'm a ball vape guy now, I'm Robbie Balls. Sucking up balls. That's Robbie Balls. Yes, sucking up balls. Stop saying it like that. Sucking up balls. That's enough, y'all. Just say my name, it's Robbie Balls. Robbie Balls, Robbie Balls. Robbie Balls! Robbie Balls! Thank you so much for saving us, Robbie Balls. Let's get out of this black hole, guys. Screwball. Engage.
Hey, it's Mr. Grode's sensual goddamn palette. I know Chris. He's a really cool dude. Robbie Balls. That's amazing. Let's go check it out. Wow, there are so many luscious plants on this planet. Wait a second. Is that music? Are the plants singing something? That's a very sensual jam. But where is this Mr. Grow It guy? I think he's over there in the giant grow tent. Let's go check it out. Hello? Is anyone home? Welcome, welcome to my excellent grow palace. Are you fellas new to our sensual garden planet? Hey Chris, how are you man? Oh snap, it's Blunt Robert. It's so good to see you man. Please don't call me Blunt Robert. Everyone calls me Robbie Balls now. That new name of yours makes me quite uncomfortable, dude. How have you been anyway, Chris? Your planet is looking luscious and very sensual. Thank you, Robbie Balls. And who are these charming friends of yours? Oh, this is Troy and Jerry. We've just been fucking around in the black hole. Sup? Nice to meet you, Chris. Deeds, I'm glad you're here. I really need your help. The lusciousness and sensuality of the planet is under threat. An evil winged animal has been swooping in at night and stealing all the stash blend nutrients. Wait, you use stash blend too? No way. That's my go-to. Right on, dude. It's my favorite plant additive. It's NPK rich, with fortified soluble silicon, soil enhancing bacteria, and humic acid. How else do you think I keep this planet so moist and sensual? Did you say it's an evil winged animal? It's not some kind of pigeon, is it? Oh my god, how did you know? Looks like the fellas are going on a hunt for an evil pigeon. What the hell is happening in this show? Find out in the next episode, motherfuckers. Fuckers, fuckers, fuckers. <laughs> that was so funny i was Thank dying you. laughing behind the scenes that's awesome man oh my god <laughs> is my voice that soft <laughs> i don't know I mean, he picks different like uh like like for instance rob's voice we've already used before uh it was um, what's the actor's did? name yeah what's the actor's name that uh that does the um and, and harry potter uh S snape oh um, shit when one of those clips huh yeah it sounds it sounds like the same guy there so it's uh i don't know but nah it, but it, you know what you sound a whole lot more like you than we sound like us i don't know who we sound like so <laughs> That was um, well made. Nice job, gentlemen. That was incredible. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah he's really cool. it. That was good funny. Is. I was laughing my ass off. I was all I Emily I in there. That was good. The new background track, man. Like that, 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 that music you were playing on your planet is. I want that in my oh. background track. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, you're, you're welcome to use that in some of your content if you want to want to put some. Thank you, Mr. Grow It songs in your in your shit, or put the dancing animated penis plants or whatever. <laughs> Play it during our next from the stash live. I'm sure people would freaking love that. Yeah, nailed the uh, the stash blend. You run that's the magic stuff, huh? 
I don't know. Works pretty good. Yeah, you, you running it? Did you grab any? I haven't yet. No? I uh I I think I need to. Everybody everybody yeah. tells me living soil is the way. Mm. And this really amazing weed that we've been testing, the snow till is uh living soil. And I I'm a believer. I just gotta learn. Mm. Large bed. Get a large bed for that. That's what I'm going towards. Or large containers, you know. I mean, I was doing seven gallon, ten gallon. Now it's like I want bigger the better, you know. When it comes to organics, just having that larger, larger media to work with. So, um, yeah, if you do venture down that route, this okay. A lot of people, you know, go for is the larger bed. Makes what about sense. having a giant bed with multiple plants? Yeah, that's, absolutely. Of course, that's cool. absolutely. Okay. You get some cover crops in there, some mulch layers. Know, you could do it. Do it good to add some orbs in there. You could do a lot of stuff. I mean, if you get really good, you can compost your own things, right? You have a little verm- vermicompost bin or a compost pile back, and then you'll be able to throw away your scraps and then use that to put in your garden. Then you don't have to buy nutrients at all, right? So Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. way. That's just that's a way to go about it, and it's very successful too. And then adding in like worm castings is always great to add throughout the growth cycle. So, are there any other plants that do well with weed growing, like symbiotic kind of? You know what I mean? Like yeah, a forest, yeah. just one tree. You know, I mean. So, I mean, are there other plants that do well with it? A lot of people grow grow like clover with them for nitrogen fixation. So, um, it basically takes nitrogen from the air and converts into a form that the plant can use. Now you got to kill off the cover crop and then it will kind of convert into that, into the soil, but you're capturing that nitrogen from the air and then getting into the soil through that process. So a lot of people run clover with it. Um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, cover crops you can use like, you know, buck, buckwheat, alyssum, um, they just, a lot of different things, but I mostly run clover and then I usually do a mulch layer. I'll do like a straw barley straw is usually what I use for a mulch layer. Some people use cardboard as a mulch layer. There's cardboard. Use that kind of just, just to cover okay. and kind of get the same benefits as a mulch layer. Huh. Right on. Nice. So This is fascinating. I, yeah. uh, I've always heard of some of this stuff, but it, I've never actually paid attention to it because I just assumed that soil wasn't for me. I, <laughs> well, I, we talked before we had that conversation uh, and you were talking about your plants and we did that video. So I learned a little bit about it. So you're synthetic and then, so you're really going to make that transition over to organic, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, I really want to, uh, I, I think that hydroponics is kind of easy in a way. And I think I'm, I'm making soil growing harder than it needs to be because I overthink things and I have like ADHD and I'm kind of obsessive with, with some stuff. So like I'm the guy that like unzips that that fucking tent five six times a day. <laughs> That's a check. And like, did I water it earlier? I don't think so. And then I'll water it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I did. And yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm that guy. Yeah. And I need to be be more organized for for hand watering. Yeah. Well, you can get a blue mat system, auto watering system, something super easy. It just drips down onto it. All you have to do is control a bucket, make sure the bucket's full, and then it just drips down onto your plants. That'll be my next thing for sure. Yeah. For sure. Damn. I like that. Yeah. I got to move soon. So I, I won't be doing any growing for a few months, unfortunately. Damn. Yeah. You just moved recently. Did you move plants? Yeah. Yeah. I made a move. Uh, so I didn't move too far away. Moved the other side of town, basically. <laughs> and um, yeah, just closer to civilization a little bit. And had to move out grow operation too. And I decided not to flower out some plants. I know there's some people who get mad at me for not flowering out plants, right? But like just cloning them and then killing off the mothers and kind of now just transferring clones over, right? So a whole bunch of clones are just transferred over instead of these these big plants. So um, but yeah, I'm excited. Excited to start something new, got a newer, um, larger grow space to work with. Uh, I'm gonna put a four by eight in there and then a four by four and then I think a two by four and maybe like a little clone tent too. And just have a whole bunch of different tents going on. And 
have a whole bunch of different things to have fun with, you know what I mean? That's mostly why I, I grow is fun. And of course to get the medicinal benefits off of it, but, <laughs> but yeah, just have fun with it really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got into it to a point where I had three or four tents going and it was really fun. And then it hit a point where it was like farming, you know, where I had to like commit six, eight hours a day or a week oh. or, you know, like it's like a bunch of time to this and, it started just like throwing my schedule and then I, I stopped being fun for me. It started uh, being like yeah. a massive chore. Yep. And then after, after uh, a, a shitty harvest, it was just like, and didn't get any good weed out of it. Damn, that really hurts. <laughs> yeah. So now I got to take it seriously again. <laughs> you guys ever get anything good from just throwing seeds outside and then coming back later? Oh, for uh, me personally, uh, yeah. I actually tried to do that my first grow ever. Yeah. <laughs> I was like 15 years old, went deep into the woods with a buddy, and it was like a, a little stream and then uh, moist soil right next to it. So I just threw some seeds down and um, came. we came back four or five months later. It was tall, spindly plants, nothing of it. So it's like we didn't know what the heck we were doing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we just abandoned those plants. Um, but, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that one. <laughs> Yeah, but they took root. That's dope. <clears throat> People always tell me that I should do that. They're like, oh, you're in Southern California. You should just throw out some seeds. But my friend right. in San Diego always grows outdoor. And he every year he says he loses about 60% of his crop to like bugs or some shit like that. Mm. I'm like, man, I don't want to be sifting through my my buds to figure out which ones have bugs and <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean there's ways to like combat that stuff and ipm so you can do like preventative sprays a lot of people do in order to try to prevent pests from even occurring at all you know what i mean outdoor you can definitely get some really good results from for sure um and then just indoor is just a whole different battlefield have you tried outdoor in vegas yeah vegas yeah. is hot have you done that yeah it's really hot to grow out here and buddy of mine you talk about just throwing the seeds down uh Got to give a shout out to Envy Closet Med Grower. It's funny, I was watching his uh, Instagram not too long ago. Actually, it was a while ago now where he's uh, had this plant just growing out of the crack of his stairs. So he had just all pavement and then like the stairs and there's a crack and then all of a sudden there's a cannabis plant growing up. He let him grew. There was a couple, I think. Let him grew and then just curbside or whatever, pavement uh, cannabis. It just grew on its own naturally like that. It was kind of kind of crazy to see. Amazing. It's crazy. Right in the crack. <laughs> crack. Crack cannabis. Call it crack cannabis. <laughs> so you uh you've been using this screwball? Yeah. I like it so far. This thing's uh pretty convenient to use, you know what I mean? Like just placing it on top and then kind of controlling it that way. And then um lights up uh, you know, fires up pretty quick and pretty portable. Not not too bad, you know. And after the hit feels like you took a dab, you know, for the most part. So yeah. I got wrecked off of it. So I really like it. Have you uh, explored the temperatures much? Have you settled in on uh, a temperature? Uh, yeah. So I've been ranging from like 420, so as low as 420. And then uh, just kind of testing that slowly, kind of working, working my way up a little bit. 430, 450, 475, um, 500, and then kind of just stopped at 500 so far. Thinking about, I don't know, what, what do you guys normally run it at? Mine's at 540 right now. 540, okay. Yeah. Mine, uh, I'm like you. Uh, I, I was as low as 420, and right now I've climbed up to 465 at the moment. So mm, okay. That's what I'm on right now. And for me, this is more of a, a quicker hit. Like on the 420, that was a real nice three or four hits per bowl kind of a thing. But here I can I can get it in two or two and a half. Hmm. But like that. I'm doing it. I'm doing a two hit technique where uh, when I, on my fresh green bowl, I put the head on and then I hit it pretty much right away. And then on my second hit, I'll put the head on there and let it pre soak for like 30 seconds or 40 seconds. And then I'll hit it and it just like destroys whatever's left. Dude, I want to do that right now. That sounds great. Let's do it. Let's Let do it. Sit there for a while. I'm yeah. going to keep on my 465, though. I'll keep my tip, but I'll do that method. You know what I'm saying? 
That's fucking awesome. Let's do some of that. Pack that shit up. Dude, yeah, what's that it like? Awesome, man. I like it so far. I really like it. I'm kind of trying to use it more, actually. You know what I mean? Transition over to it a little bit more because, wow. uh, I mean, smoking blunts is one thing. Smoking joints are like different effects, different experiences. And I usually kind of rotate around between the different methods, you know, um, and adding this to the rotation, definitely 100. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I think about, uh, the, the high per gram and then you factor in like the flavor and the, the terps uh, and then the smell left over those things. Like my house doesn't smell like a pot smoker's house. Mm. Like when my landlord comes over, she doesn't know. Dissipates a lot easier. Yeah. Way better than a blunt wood. It yeah, looks like some nice weed. Frosty. Beautiful. Yeah, this is what we were doing the other night. This is that jealousy runs, man. Oh, that's the snow till. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I got a green bowl already. I'm about Weird. to grind that up and, and then unpack it. We already played the Betty White song. Yeah, no, we're not. Yeah, I hear you. Man. <laughs> Hello, Look. this is Betty White. You need some time to grind. All right, we're going to hit this thing here. Is that what we're going to do? You gotta, you gotta give me a moment. Now I gotta grind some sheet. Now I gotta grind some sheet. Now I gotta grind some sheet. Now I gotta grind some. What strain you got? Pink strummer and gelato. Now I gotta grind some. I just pulled out a nug, dude. Now I gotta grind some. Now I gotta grind some. Now I gotta grind some sheet. Let me grind one up. A little deja vu, <laughs> right? Right, it's fucking great. Did you get your bowl loaded? No, I just ground one out, man. Check it out. Oh, uh, you're just spinning your your shit, your Finish finger popping off. each other's assholes over there. Oh, I like how you think that through. Hi there. Well, look at that view, right? How you doing? What kind of grinder are you using, Mr. Oh. Gruitt? Uh, just use a AC Infinity grinder. Talking about grinder? Oh, they mm -hmm. got a grinder. <laughs> they got a grinder, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It's pretty good. Nice. Looks like it's uh they, they put their name on something that's already on the market, probably. It's almost like branded grinders are even mm -hmm. the raw ones. I don't know too much about grinders. Oh, I'm obsessed with them. Really? <laughs> Dude, I have like 100 grinders in my collection. It's it's silly. It's what silly. do you think about the ones that are like, uh, you just place it over a table and that's got like the ball, uh, the ball ones, balls? Uh, there's a place for them. I don't know what they're you going. Know, they're they're going to beat the shit out of your weed, you know. Mm. But if, if, you're, if you have wrist problems, it's called the whack it. Uh, if you have wrist problems and you can't, <laughs> can't grind, it uh, it works okay. Were, were you trying to get me to say the name? What's, what's... The whack it. I love like it. it. The way. I, I hated it. I hated it at first. Like I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. Like, That's just going to make all your fucking trichomes fly all over the place. You know, I'd be just like, me, you know, beating it on there. But then like some lady came to me and she's like, she had her, her wrists were so frail that she couldn't crank a grinder she hmm. couldn't do anything poor husband he, he, and she he couldn't grind any normal grinder so like the the whack it was something that she could just put her nug down on the tray and just like whoop with like a little slap job thing it's like whirp, whirp, and just like a couple pulses breaks up the nug enough to scoop it up and put it in your blunt or your bowl or whatever kind of like a coffee grinder i used to use coffee grinders back in the day wow yeah, me too. I had those. But if you let it go so lo too long, it just turns to dust. You know what I mean? So you got to time. It's like, jing, jing. And it's like, okay, perfect. You ain't kidding. <laughs> and, and as a vaporist, there's a time when you play with that. You know, you're kind of like, oh, I can make keef. And you just fucking grind it <laughs> up and throw it in there. And you get these massive hits that are totally different. But um, yeah, yeah kind of funky, man. So whacking you and grinding. When you use your when you roll when you use a blunt when you when you roll the blunt, 
uh, do you use the, the grinder or do you break up your nugs by hand? I use a grinder. Uh, okay. Uh, it works out pretty good. Grinder for that yeah. and grinder for bowls and stuff. Yeah, I don't really. It's better to a little bit easier to use the grinder, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Using the same grinder for your uh, for your uh, screwball here. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Try a bowl with just a nugget in there and, instead, like like kind of a flat spread out nugget that kind of covers the screen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just drop that in there. Don't grind it. Just put that in there and take your take your your tamp here that came with or whatever and kind of tamp it down and and hmm. uh, see how that goes. I, I think you'll appreciate the taste. Okay. All right. Let me get this thing back in rotation then. We gotta get into uh, what we got in there from previous bowl. Jerry's a whole nug man. We need a song for that, really. Yeah, we need a whole nug, whole nug thing there. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll pack you one here and show you what I'm talking about as far as the we can call it the spread and pack if you want. You spread it out and pack spread it. Down. I don't know if that's appropriate, Jerry. <laughs> well, it's to, to, to the pure, all things are pure, man. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I thought for sure the plants that Mr. Grow it was growing on a sensual planet were going to get us kicked off of Twitch. <laughs> like I was just waiting. Right. I, get, I had the panel open. <laughs> Wait, what? That's funny. The, in the animation thing, the the first plant that you're growing on, yes. your, on your planet there really, I mean, they all looked phallical. <laughs> the first one really looked mm -hmm. like my wife like blushed when she saw it, you know. Yeah, my daughter, same. <laughs> <laughs> to what Some shock value but i figured there's male plants so you know it kind of made some sense oh shit see so your whole nugging it i got yeah. a green bowl right on sounds like we're all gonna have fun together here so rob was rob was talking to us saying he, he went from like eight blunts a day to like four blunts a day with with the screwball in his life. How has it affected yours at all? Mm. I don't know. Every almost every day I'll token on the screwed up to screwball. At night mostly, you know what I mean? Before bed, one to two hours before bed. I just take a hit, get blasted, and then uh, and then be able to kind of settle down and fall asleep, you know, a few hours, an hour or two later. So yeah. That's mostly what I like to do it. Throughout the day, I'm usually just consuming in other ways. Because you really do, and I mean, my opinion, my experience is like it feels a lot like taking a dab of concentrate, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But with just flour. Like you just vape and flour. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you still get like that flavor from vape, you know, the, the vape flavor, the vaping flour. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That unique. I don't even know what, how to explain it, but <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Like yeah. you still taste it. If you want to go light and still enjoy the flavor, you can, uh, you know, put a whole lot less in the bowl, uh, turn your temperature down, and then just take little half hits instead. And uh, that can give you a real nice daytime buzz if you want from a vape. Hmm. I'll have to try that out. Because I know what you're talking about. These these dab like hits are they 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 can they can be intoxicating. <laughs> yeah. They can. They catch up. That's yeah, good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right on. <laughs> You look at it under under a microscope after vaping it, and you see like all the the flower structure is still there, and the trichome stalks are still there, but all of the trichome heads are just like gone, like everything is just mm -hmm. vanished. So this is just a one hitter here for the nug. No, I I would slow it down. Um, take take a take a, a slower hit, maybe um, not as long. What and then temp? Take the hit. And then take, uh, what are you at now? 450. I drop it down to like 420 if you want, maybe even a little lower. You'll, you'll, you'll turn it back up at some point probably, but just the, the, the flavors you can get here with a low temp and, and not grinding. And I basically will take one, one and a half full hits. So maybe like two, three little hits and then <laughs> try to flip it over without damaging it and come at it from the other side for one or two. And then I'll chop it up into bits and take a really strong hit. Sort of like Troy was saying, <laughs> all that beginning stuff is that really flavor punch that he gets in his first hit. And then after I chop it up, I'm going after when he takes his big second heat soaked hit. So it's kind of like 
it's not the same thing, but it's kind of like that's that's the line in the in the in the session that is similar on either side for us. So anyhow, mine's already nice and packed down and ready to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna <clears throat> have some fun with my with my nuggets. Jerry's always encouraging everybody to drop it down, go to little temps. I don't I don't try to encourage everybody to go to the high temps for the more intense shit, but I, I do hope they explore it because it does have a certain level of satisfaction, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like a different mm -hmm. high, different yeah. different hit. Especially for a smoker. Especially for a smoker. Yeah. Sure. That's why I run at 540. And I, I know people that run hotter than me. Some Anybody run running like six, 700 or what? <laughs> I don't know about with this vape, but yeah, I'm with other, other similar vape heads. Yeah. I know, I know a lot of people that run in a, in a temperature zone that will combust if you don't hit it the right way. Mm -hmm. Like if you hit it too slow or you hit it too fast or you leave it on there too long. You gotta be hitting it when you put it on, or hit it, or take it off, and keep keep hitting it. People run in those combustion zones. Wow. Yeah. Oh God. I feel like when the temperature is so high, it's like there's some molecules that can become cancerous or something. I think of that. I don't know if you've heard anything about that, but like running too high of temps being like super dangerous for you. Maybe with uh, some of the pro science, yeah, I don't even know. I'm not. Yeah, maybe with some of the older stuff or stuff that has you know other things with it on like a dabable. You know, what I mean, you might get titanium some titanium nail or something. Stuff. Yeah, that can make a difference. You can take any concentrate way too high, and it happens a lot with you know manual torch dabs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's been a long time since I deliberately did anything over five fifty or six hundred on on any on any vape hmm. right and even then the like when when i'm running at 540 the temp on the the coil is going to be tuned for the 540 the balls will be cooler than 540 mm -hmm. and the air that goes through them by the time it hits the herb it's not going to be 540 it's going to be you know drastically lower yeah that delta is always the the golden that's that's what everybody wants to know is what's the delta there. Yeah. You know, is it linear? what I like about the the five forty temp is I can just rip it hard and fast. Yeah, I can just like more just like, like a bong rip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like take take a big ass inhale, you know, like breathing. Just breathe in, breathe out. That's what All I right, want. We're good at four twenty. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. I got a little cheer from you. How long Enjoy. do you use this for usually? Go hit it right now. This is your first hit on a nugget. Go hit, hit it right, right now. now. Yeah. And then I would take it off after you were, yeah, there you go. And leave it off. No, don't put it back on. Leave it off. T take it off the bowl. Take it and off? You yeah, yeah. Because we're nugget in this thing. We're trying to prolong the taste. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're doing a whole it like thing. this? Um, well, no. At this point, you'll, you'll no. Well, I mean, you can clear the chamber if you want, but you're going to have to probably. You'll probably come back and do one more hit before you flip it. You know what I'm mm. saying? Before you poke it with the sticks or whatever you're going to do. But um, okay. I've never put a full nug in there. It's always been ground up. Right? Yeah. No, I hear you. But now you can go ahead and take another hit. Just, Please. just what you don't do is leave it on the head in between hits until you're ready to really finish it. So for yeah, now, right. it, it's time to just kind of play with the flavors and, and and enjoy what comes out. Focus on whatever you get at these lower temps. His nose is so close to that heater. It's scary. True. Yeah, you probably get like two hits with the nug on one direction, and then you could flip the nug and get two hits on the other side, and then take a little pair of scissors and just like like cut it up a couple times. Decimate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to get like all the good flavors with like minimal popcorn taste, I think. Mm. Yeah, so like low temp. Gonna... Low temp is definitely definitely great sometimes if you just chill and just want a little taste you know yeah and uh there's there's something to vaping low temp where it gives you a different kind of high as well uh, with mercine 
Like we, Jerry and I, we did this uh, the, the, this oh, yeah. thing a while back, a couple years ago, I think. Now, it was a long uh, time ago. Yeah. We we both got a strain that was higher and had mercine in it, and then we vaped at a low temperature only. We just kept vaping at low temperatures, and the the, the stone that we got was unexpected. Like it felt like a high temp stone, mm. even though it was a low temp stone. Like we were both just faded and like dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah man the show could have ended right there but we just stayed forever <laughs> one of those shows where it never ends because you're too faded to figure it out yeah yeah you don't consume in your your content really do you um no i mean i have yeah but it's not like a big thing like a lot i know a lot of people do like oh let, let's smoke and then let's look at the garden. You know what I mean? So now I just go kind of straight into the garden. I don't really do, you know, I consume on Twitch and stuff like that, you know, live streams. So, but okay. as far as YouTube videos now, like on my podcast, not really. And then, uh, in my main videos, I just didn't really, I don't know. I don't really enjoy watching that stuff as much. I prefer like just to the grow. So that's kind of like my content, just get into the grow. And like, so if I'm not, if I don't really like watching that stuff, why, you know, what I do that stuff kind of, I don't know. I mean, it has its yeah. place, but um, for sure. Yeah. When, when I would, when I was looking for grow content and the people would always start with a dab or whatever, I would totally fast forward through it. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not here to watch your dab. Although it looks <laughs> cool. I am here for like the topical thing that I clicked on your video for, which is <laughs> how to water a seedling or whatever. You know? According to uh, was it Mr. Beast? He says uh, you got to have what it says in your title within the first five seconds of the video. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Show up right away, and then you continue on with it. Yeah, his videos are a whole different league, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they really are. I started watching his content recently, and man, he's got he's got so much money invested in in those videos. He like just he commits to it, and that's what makes it so remarkable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable what he's done and what he's doing. You know, <laughs> it's like you got a TV show I think coming up or something like that. I don't know. Sometimes he shows up on my feed as I'm scrolling through, and it's like I think he's signed a deal to do a TV show or something with somebody. I forget okay. who. My, my kid said that he was in Kung Fu Panda Four. Like Far out, it's like a voice oh, wow. in there. I'll that's see that. That's that's one I'll. Okay. Oh yeah, right on. There it is. That'll be me. Nice. I'm ready to beat this up again. So you okay. got multiple books out right now. Yes. Is it I've four? Got... You got four books? No, no, just two. Two. Two yes, two. Seven Steps to Real Cannabis, which I wrote in 2016. Um, revised it, revised it again. 2020 is kind of the latest revision. And then uh, that's kind of like a beginner grow book on just being able to get through your first grow from the equipment, seeds, and all the stages of growth, harvest dry cure on an elementary level, I would say, beginner level and elementary. All right. And then I um, think I want to got one on organics as well, organic cannabis cultivation. And, um, yeah, if you want to learn organics, that's kind of a beginner into intermediate book for those folks. Yeah, yeah there it is right there. Dude, that's amazing. What's it uh what's it like getting a book out? Uh, you know, I've always just kind of enjoyed writing and it's always just kind of been like a natural thing for mm -hmm. me. So I don't know. I was just inspired to do it and then did it. And yeah, it's it's great to know that people are consuming you know reading the book and they're getting enjoyment out of it and value out of it you know it's oh, a little humbling it's just cool so that's awesome wow that's nice man that's interesting i love it that you've got two books like that's impressive yeah i'm gonna, thinking about my third i don't know what's up next I'm gonna get hit with inspiration and then uh there'll, there'll be more Maybe it'll be on triploids. Yeah. Somebody said I should uh, do children's books. Start, start releasing children's books on gardening. Dude, that's actually a pretty good idea, man. I think, I think so. your parents would eat that shit up. You think so? 
Do you grow other plants? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got some vegetables, things like yeah. tomatoes, kale, um, bok choy, lettuce, just a lot of leafy greens for the most right part, on. peppers, melons. So, but I'm not too crazy about, about to be honest with you, Vegas, it's been difficult. And my last place that I lived at was really too small of a backyard. You know, I had a couple of containers and a, uh, two foot by nine foot bed, but nothing serious, you know? Um, now actually with, with this move, I'm thankful I'm going to be able to do something outdoors. So I'll be able to have like a little orchard, um, bunch of different fruit trees, citrus trees, and then, uh, and then I'll have some raised, raised beds. So I have like leafy greens and herbs. And so I'm going to, yeah, take a crack at outdoors out here and really try to take it a little bit seriouser than I have in the past and, uh, get some successful harvests. That's awesome. That's exciting. I, I know that uh, it's possible because that grow your own leafy greens or whatever is in is in Vegas or he was in Vegas for a time, and he had a, a he was always going to different places in Vegas where they were outdoor gardening and growing just tons of shit. And I was always kind of envious. I'm like, man, that looks like pretty fun to, to have. Yeah, it's possible. And there's things here that uh, is very low maintenance, right? So you can plant, I'm going to be planting a uh, lime tree, lemon tree, orange, um, potentially an apple, apricot. Um, apple, right on. I haven't really decided, but uh, peaches grow well here as well. But like a lot more hands off than it is some of like leafy greens or some of these other plants. So I'm excited to grow those. Yeah. Peaches, peaches are fun. We had a, our first house that we moved to in California had a peach tree, and that was the first year. It was amazing. Second year it was a little more inconvenient because there was like bees everywhere. Like oh, bees wow. found the peaches before the peaches got to be <laughs> human size. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of wild. Yeah, bees. That's one thing that attracts. I mean, wherever there's flowers, right and a lot of the trees out there and bushes out there have flowers and that bees are out there. <laughs> I'm yeah. not too uh, scared of bees though. I'm one of those people, I guess not too crazy about bees. I know some people are really crazy about beads, bees, <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah. just terrified. Uh, I would, that was me. I'll be hundred percent honest. With you. I was irrationally scared of bees as a child into my a- adult life. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I I'm, I told a story once before in the stream where I was in my car at the Taco Bell drive through getting ready to order, and a, I rolled down my window getting ready to order, and a bee flew in my car, and I lost my shit. I whipped off my seatbelt, opened the door, got the fuck out. My car was still in drive, and it oh, went, no. up, went forward, went up over the curb, went into the bushes. And people <laughs> ran out. They're like, "Are you okay? What's, what's going on?" I'm like, "It's a bee." And the, wow. the guy's like, the "Cars running serious? down the road." <laughs> like, yeah, for yeah. a big bee. <laughs> Shut up. But Just now, me. I got, I got stung. My so my my mom was handicapped, and and she she was getting stung, and I raced to her rescue to get her out of the the area, and I got stung like three times Oof. on my hand, and I was like, "Oh shit." That's not that's not so bad, you know, and then no, I'm okay with them. Hmm. No shit. Yeah. That's wild. Okay. Not me. But they don't they don't bug me. Like when they come around, I just kind of chill out. But I got some big motherfuckers here. Like I got some of those carpenter bees that are big bumblebees that burr the perfect circles into your wood houses. Uh-huh. And uh, they come around and they'll buzz the tower. I was outside just the other day and he goes, mm-hmm. like, Jesus, just look close, bro. Go close. Yeah, yeah. thanks. You can have so a whole yard. Have honeybees. <laughs> no, these things are like golf ball size motherfuckers in the backyard flying around. Big. I'm not... California honeybees. I'll, I'll take those. Yeah. Sounds like I'd like them yeah. too better than what I got. It's monster. Wear bees. I got wear bees. So you said you said that the first time you smoked you didn't you didn't really get high. I've heard this from so many people and I read so many different urban mm-hmm. legends saying that the first time you smoke you don't you don't get high because you're 
your cannabinoid receptors aren't listening until you get a taste of it and then and then they they wake up or whatever you know anything about this hmm wait what (laughs) (laughs) that's the best answer wait what no i don't know anything about this explain (laughs) well you you've heard what that like well like for you you didn't get high for the first four or five times yeah so the question is why do you know why? Because that was what he was coming. He has an answer no. here that people are proposing. And it's I have that, no uh, idea. Your your shit's not listening until you start to use it. And then it goes, oh, yeah, what's, so what's this stuff? You have, you, your body has an endocannabinoid system. The little receptors that mm. ca- lat- latch on to THC and CBD and all those cannabinoids. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's dormant. You know, your body doesn't have any thc or cbd in it growing up until you you're 13 and you find some cool friends or whatever and you get your first joint and then you get it it's the 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 people say that the first time you smoke you know your, your system isn't all that receptive so you don't you may not get any effects i know i did i i remember my first time very well and I remember my second time, everybody in the car was saying, because it was my first time, because I didn't tell them about my first time. <laughs> they, they were like, oh, you're not even going to get high, bro, because it's your first time. And then I got super duper fucking high. Right on. It's wild. Yeah, I do remember it took me several times. And uh, actually, one of my exes, same deal. I would smoke with her, take bong rips. She'd be coughing her brains out and be perfectly fine dab off you know a pen or whatever and then uh, finally <laughs> we had edibles <laughs> that's, and that, that's what did it for us for her um Back then, it was nice. super strong brownies i made them wrong i put like oh, i say it's like two ounces within like uh, eight to 12 ounces of butter or something i made you know what i mean of or oil i think i made so like really wow. really concentrated don't quote me on that but it was very strong and I ended up like basically hallucinating, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys have wow. ever been on that strong of, to the point where you're almost like hallucinate, hallucination. Yeah. And, uh, that was fun. And then she got all <laughs> crazy, <laughs> you know, for her first time ever, you know, she was just gone off of those. <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, that's a story. <laughs> that's pretty hilarious, man. Those, those strong edibles. Everybody has a strong edible instance or two. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I don't do you even mean, remember my first time. I remember doing it, but I don't remember anything after that. I remember that I loved it and would chased it ever since, but I don't remember. I don't remember what the fuck. You don't remember your first time? Uh, wow. Like, like I don't remember what happened after we smoked. After that, I don't remember what happened. I remember getting in trouble for it. Everything, everything that happened in between, I lost track of. But <sighs> go figure. Was That's it? wild. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was the driver too, so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you remember that part? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah uh, I got to take off here and a few fellas. Um, I got about uh, about five minutes or so. And I gotta cool, get... man. No worries. Awesome. Yeah. No, I appreciate you coming in, man. Hey, uh, can we can we can we throw a clip at him before he goes? Because we got those clips. Most of my plants are what I consider small. And from time to time, I will get somebody to comment on my videos and uh, criticize or I guess make fun of me (laughs) or try to make fun of me for growing smaller plants um, and not really realize that that's what I'm trying to do. So first, what do I consider small plants? I consider a medium sized plant uh, a plant that takes up about two feet by two feet wide of grow space with training and uh you know is two and a half to maybe three and a half four feet tall is like a medium sized plant so anything smaller than that is what i personally consider a small plant um, sometimes they do training on the plants which make them uh, make the structure even smaller than if i were to just let, let the plant grow naturally and also aim for a shorter veg time and that's gonna be another thing that kind of keeps my plants small so why why do i do this yes why <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, when I watched that back, I cringe. It was so long ago. I'm like, oh, what? 
I always, I always cringe when I look at old videos. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh man. Small you still plants, small plant? variety. Variety is key. Like it's great to be able to have a variety. You know, being able to grow a bunch of small ones is easy to manage and you get a variety if you're growing all different cultivars. Mm. What kind of yield would you get from each on a small plant? Uh, two to four ounces, you know, is typically what I aim for, you know, and okay. then I'll be able to, you know, I can grow 12 plants, 12 different cultivars, two to, you know, it adds up, you know, you do some math there. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you've got enough for yourself. And luckily in this state, I can gift as well. So I can gift it to friends, family, whoever. Right on. I think I can legally have six. Six. Okay. I think that's what the California. Better than is. Montana. Montana's two, I think. Oof, wow. Two is tough. Okay. We can't grow here yet. <laughs> Feel for you, Montana. If anybody in Ger the chat is Montana. <laughs> anybody in Montana. Yeah. Germany passed some shit recently. Like right. yesterday, today. They finally got their date set like April 1st, I think. That's what I saw too. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Like that, as of then, you can walk around with just under an ounce, it looks like. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Way to go, man. That's going to change some shit, man. When they start. That's incredible. In fact, it's, it's monumental. Say, it's, it is. Dude, it's historic. Germany is going to be huge. If I could say congratulations yeah. in German, I would, but I cannot. So right. instead, here is some. Ramstein lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Well, do appreciate right. you coming out and hanging with us, man. And uh, I'm glad you're digging the vape. Uh, we've been, it's been fun hanging. I mean, we can uh, catch up with you again some other time too, if you want. That'd be fun, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is chill. Uh, you guys are awesome. You know, I mean, we had a pre-show before this, you know, I mean, a couple weeks ago and that was just, just chill. Yeah. And um, yeah. Appreciate what you guys are doing. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Hey, man. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. it means a lot. You want to uh, drop any URLs or where to find your stuff or where, where, where to best can... follow you, where to buy your books? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Search for me, uh, mrgrowit.com. Uh, books are on Amazon or my website. And then YouTube, Mr. Grow It. Garden Talk with Mr. Grow It is my podcast from the stash podcast with uh, me rob from cannabis lifestyle tv and pigeons 420 and um yeah that's that's how you can find me so badass right on look them up good content appreciate you guys having me on appreciate yeah thanks here, brother man. yeah yes, keep it up man take care guys peace, peace. that's fun man it's great to see him using that vape and enjoying it. And, yeah, man, um, he's he's taught so many people how to grow weed. You know, yeah, like yeah. people always come to me and, and they're always like, like oh, man, I, I wouldn't know anything about vapes if it wasn't for you. And your videos like five years ago, and I've been following you for the last six years. And without yeah. you, there wouldn't be anything and I'm like, nah, I'm like, oh, that's not not true. And uh, but the, Mr. Grow It is like that. Like with, without him, there wouldn't be a lot of knowledge out there. Like he's put out so much content. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. So much content, good stuff too. And to the point, he's, like I mean, his editing style. I mean, I watched some things the other day that I was like, man, he just gets right to it. Like he's not wasting anybody's time. And he challenges things. He doesn't just like go with the what the bro grow culture says is so mm -hmm. because there's a ton of that in the grow space you know how like when you get in certain circles and won't, the one way is the right way in the yeah. grow space there's a lot of that like you get in certain communities there's a whole lot of one way isms yeah and uh mr grow it like was the dude who was cutting through all that bullshit and just be like, like objective about it. Right on, man. Right on. I'm glad he came on, man. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool. I got another that, green bull. Here. Yeah, let me, uh, I got, hang on. I've got, I've already ground. I can fill it real quick. I, uh, and then we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, pigeons on at some point too with, with the, with the screwball when we get that. The pigeons? Evil Pigeons 420.
I think so. Isn't that right? Bro, that, that round them up. That episode with, uh, yeah. with Rob. Oh my God. Yeah, man. Robbie Balls. Rob, Robbie was? Balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I was, say it like that, <laughs> dude. When he's, I, I fucking lost my shit. I swear, I I had a cough drop in my mouth, and I almost choked on it. Like I laughed so hard that it like went down in, in the back of my my throat hole, and I was like, like uh-huh. oh, I was like trying to like blow it out, like because oh, oh, it was like just awesome. bouncing around in the back of my fucking throat. Rubber oh balls. my god, Rubby balls. Robbie balls. Yeah, man. He's sucking balls. <laughs> Stop yeah, saying it like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's sucking balls. The pets singing that. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I'm so glad. That's some funny shit, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna watch it again as soon as we're done here, man. Should we just play parts of that, or should we? I wish we could watch it on my own. Let's, let's, let's let it. Oh, I, I wanted to let the YouTube play numbers All right. be natural. And yeah. if we overplay it right now, people are going to be pissed off. <laughs> Don't be people are already pissed. And I, I kind of like that. <laughs> We're in the chat. We got, some, we got some piss in the chat over it or somewhere Dude, else. I don't. I don't know why, but like whenever I see a scenario where there's like five or six or ten raving <laughs> fans mm-hmm. for every one like vocal speaking out against it, like I hate this. Like the people that are like, I hate this fucking music shit. And like, <laughs> I'm gonna stop watching the show. Right, right. And, and there's like ten people that are like I love it. Whenever I see those things, like that's what I like to like focus on. Like I'm like, let's do more of this. Like, cause like when everybody loves it, okay. But when everyone, when everybody loves it, ex- except for like some people, really are triggered and and, and hating it. <coughs> like, Sorry. it makes me curious. You know, like. I want to learn more about this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I like it when uh, when 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 we have some people that don't like it because that just means that uh, you know we're reaching more people. Because I mean, you know what I mean. Like if you don't get you, you get to enough people, you'll find people who don't like it. That's cool. Yeah. And for those of you that don't like it, I get it, man. I mean, that that's cool. There's not a lot of it, but um, you know. Maybe maybe it's not for you, uh, but we're gonna lean into it. So, you know, like either, either either dig it, tolerate it, or or you know maybe watch something else if it makes you that upset. <laughs> yeah, but we ain't stop anytime soon, man. I love the shit. Even if everybody hated it, I'd be like, man, I'm really sorry. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. If you're, if you're unhappy, you can give a full refund. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> we'll, we'll put up an address for that because, I mean, yeah, that's a no-brainer right there. <laughs> I do have a green bowl. But, man, I was scared to hit it when Chris was here because uh, like, I was already, like, too stoned. I already hit mine. I'm sorry. The one that oh, I packed right. after you were waiting for me. Rubby balls. Going back in now? You going in? I am hitting my fresh one now. All right, Jeez. I'm swapping. Who's who's uh, who's hitting it in the chat? <sighs> yeah, that shit. But but the one today, um, somebody said it in the chat, and I thought it was perfect for me too. Was uh, that fucking thing with the background track and some of the stuff that we're talking about? I felt like I was getting higher by watching that man. Like that was really trippy. Just it was like the perfect blend of trippy, so that you kind of felt a little something come on. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was gold. I I probably watched it a dozen times in in the last two days. Seriously. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Right on. Appreciate that. Evan. Warm trippies. Yeah, man. Warm trippies. What's up, turtley wasted? Ah. Dude, I remember I used to do this thing on my Instagram. I'd go live on Instagram and I would get super high and then I would try to read all the usernames and try yeah. to be able to pronounce them. Good luck. And then every every like 39th one on I would I would slip up and it would say something like offensive or whatever. Like I accidentally I'm like, oh shit, like that's not how I need to pronounce that name. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I stop I stopped playing that game. I usually fuck it up too. Like I'm good at fucking it up because I'll read something totally different. For a while. Like I'll run with it for a while and not realize it. Mm-hmm. And then I can't change it in my head. It's too late, man. You realize I've been in my head. I've been thinking it like this for two years. Come on, dude. I don't know. What the fuck. You you still go back and forth on Cupans, Chupans, right? And then Cupans, and then I think of uh, Cupy, the, the mayo. mayo. Yeah. Oh, that's good yeah. shit. That's that's right? the best that's right there. You guys fuck with Cupy Mayo? I stopped. What? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's just part of my trying to get back to my my more uh, less dairy eating. But um, I may go back because I really miss it. <clears throat> That's some good shit, man. Right? It's very good. Like I really may go back to it. I haven't found anything that's even remotely satisfying like that. That's one of those things. Like I recommend that to people, and they follow up to like thank me. They're like yo. <laughs> Yeah, you call on that guy. Like, I bought that. I bought that mayo. I bought that I mayo. Was that you were talking about. Are so you I was in that bucket, but yeah, I was one of them. I was like, try check that stuff out. You could probably find it in Discord if you searched our DMs, man. I was like, yeah, That's I was funny. like, hey, man, <laughs> I found that shit, man. And dude, I went through. I'll tell you why because I went through like it must have been four bottles, and it got to the point where my wife was stocking it for me. Like, I mean, I was like, I was using it all the time, and. It was during a time of, I mean, basically I was eating roast beef sandwiches and putting on weight. And then I put on some weight last year by just not giving a shit about what I ate. Roast and beef sandwiches. With cupins, with cupy on it. Roast beef sandwich with cupy on it. Cupy? That shit. I ate a lot of them is all I'm saying. And uh, I'm, I'm giving those up. So there's not a whole lot of room for cupy in my life outside of. By the way, cupy is the brand. They make all kinds of shit, apparently. Like it was all over the place. Oh, really? Yeah, they make all kinds of sauces and stuff. I saw the name long before I saw the mayo. You saw the name long before you saw the mayo. Yeah. That would be the first album title. Right. That's what I'm saying. Band name yet to be determined. Sesame dressing? QP sesame dressing? Is that something you make, Emily? You make that with? Like you take QP and you make your own, or I have to buy it. Like I can buy it already ready to roll. Store bought, ready to roll. What, what really? Bro? Okay. All right. Is I this New not... Zealand stuff or what? Like what's going on? Aussie? Is this Aussie stuff? Is this Southeast, whatever the hell? Japan is Japanese. So I should be able to get it at some of these stores that I've got that basically just have stuff from all over there. Don't you think, Troy? I mean, I get my QP from the Korean store, but the Korean store also stocks a bunch of other Asian stuff. Yeah, it's not, I, I guess H Mart isn't just Korean, but it's mostly Korean, right? I'll well, have to go to the Japanese because Mitsuwa Mitsuwa is more Japanese. So if there's other what is that QP products, Mitsuwa, yeah, it's a Japanese market. You probably have one somewhere down there in Florida. It's a big, like there's a couple in Chicago and a bunch in California. It's probably in all the major metros. Awesome. Mitsubishi Marketplace. It's like a Japanese grocery store with a couple little Japanese restaurants inside. Or sort of like you showed me, but not Japanese. Which place are you talking about when I showed you? We went to the grocery store, and to the right inside, they had an actual sit-down kind of a walk-up, re- you know, deli kind of a restaurant. And then you, you, you lost me there. Not you lost. You didn't lose me, but you were looking for me there. 
Uh, remember that the store you were looking for me in that place, sort of like that the store. Yeah, the store where uh, there was every. I wanted to show you everything. Like uh, there were so <laughs> many things in that store that I wanted to show you, and you were missing in action the whole time. I got hung up as soon as we walked in. I know. Um, I know. Um, and and I, um, I heard. I found you. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Sorry, man. It was a great store, though. I saw all that shit. Like I saw all of it. That was well, you didn't. Cool. You weren't there for me to point out all the stuff I wanted to point out, though. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. we got something but, to do next time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, back to the original question. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that store. Like because that store had like a grocery store, and then there was like a Korean fried chicken in a Korean barbecue and then some other Korean restaurant. It's like quick food place right there. Yeah, I guess kind of, kind of similar. Jojo says I can get it on Amazon. That settles it. The, the like, QP sesame. That's what Jojo says right there. What other QP products are good? That's what I need to know because they're seriously, the QP Mayo is borderline magical. Like I've been, I've been doing things like putting it with grilled cheese. I've been mixing it with butter. I've been melting carry carry gold butter, softening it, and then whipping it, <laughs> whipping the carry gold Irish butter. As if the QP wasn't luscious enough, you go into it with that, and then I, I, I whip it, and then I, I whip it good. <laughs> I, I, I butter the the sourdough with it when I make grilled cheese, and oh, girl. And I, what I do is, is after the, the leftovers of the bowl with the whipped mayo and the uh, butter, uh, fuck, I forgot my train of thought. Oh, sorry, the mustard. I, I take my two mustards and I squirt my mustard into that same bowl. And then I gather the what's left of the, the QP butter mixture and I mix it with the, the mustards that I put on. And I put that on the other side of the bread. Oh, girl, it is some fucking gourmet shit right there. Damn. That does sound really over-the-top luscious. That sounds yeah. great. I think there's something else we can do next time. Then. Bro, I didn't do any cooking when you were here, did I? We we're kind of like... No, nah, because we were always running the... around. We were always running yeah. around. I never really gave you much time at home except at night when we were streaming. Yeah, Problem, yeah, because cooking's a lot of work, but man, I should show you what I can do. Yeah, up one of those grills next time I'll make that happen for sure. Did you actually see the artwork that I did, like the the video and stuff? Are you talking about I saw on Instagram the charcoal stuff? Yeah, 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 I loved it. Yeah, cool. Okay, can we show that? What do we got? Oh, yes, this is dope. Oh, nice. Okay, I did not see the actual. I saw the finished product. I didn't see the the making of. This is dope, man. Yeah, see all that charcoal on the plate? That's those are all just cannabis plants that I charred over in my grill without letting them burn. Wow, that's cool. And so now you're just in there turning them into the canvas. That's beautiful. Yeah, now I just need to buy hemp paper. And then uh, the artwork will be like really, truly 100%. Oh, that's ridiculous. Cannabis. Yeah, you get it, Seal Clever. He, was, he said this was inspired from uh, the close-ups we did of the snow tail a couple weeks ago. He's walking through the forest of trichomes. <coughs> yeah, the, the final version... It's actually not posted to Instagram because I did I did probably 20 or 30 more minutes of work to it after doing the, the final version of what I posted on Instagram. That's the artist's way, you know. Nice. Glitter it up. You put a whole bunch of sparkles <laughs> on it. No, it's actually more eraser work and Q-tip work. Like no more chalk, just 100% Q-tip work. Touching up. Very cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I don't want it to rot in my my sketchbook, so I spray it with a fixative. I'm not sure if I'll donate it or give it away. Or... I'm gonna I'd do love, more. To, I'm gonna I'd do love more. to see it on your wall next time I come over. Okay. That'd be that cool. Be a thing. Maybe yeah. I'll send it to you. You can put it on your wall. 
There you go. You can get a wall of your stuff though, man. Like you need you need a wall there, man. Get you a wall there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. I think, yeah. yeah. The, anyway. There's a whole, a whole bunch of art in the house. Some of it's already mine. Right. Got some great walls. I had a fun time looking at your walls. Absolutely. I'll be moving in the next few months. So pick a new wall. Find some new walls. Yes. I love to find some new walls. Run on, run on, run on, run on. Ooh, I am baked, bro. This fucking weed and this fucking vape are fucking baking me, man. I want to learn what the D.A.R.E. program has been up to lately. Oh, man. Do we? Do we? Shit, yeah, let's fucking... <laughs> man, let's see what those This fucking... is Haley, the only protester outside the International D.A.R.E. Conference in Las Vegas, where inside, hundreds of future D.A.R.E. officers are being trained by seasoned veterans. Like Retro Bill, who once told me, by way of a roll-in TV set in fifth grade, not to do cocaine or join a gang. These illegal drugs are always bad for you. Marijuana is also a harmful drug. Say no! Retro Bill, capital R-E-T-R-O, capital B-I-L. L, also known as the International Dare Safety and Self-Esteem Buddy, official title. Hey everyone, I'm Retro Bill, your Dare Safety Buddy. Cool! Your Dare officers are always there to help you keep safe, drug-free, and violence-free. Cool! Dare. Drug and alcohol resistance education. Many of you who went to school in the 80s and 90s may remember Dare. Yeah. was a Reagan era drug prevention program that was once in 95% of all American schools until 1998 when it lost all of its federal funding following the release of a study that showed that students of the D.A.R.E. generation were actually more likely to use drugs than any other generation before them. But now guess what? D.A.R.E. is motherfucking back y'all. No more getting high because it's 2023. Shit's all different now. You got fentanyl, all bad. You got vaping, giving all the kids popcorn lung. So. Dare is back in this bitch. Dare is moving forward into the next millennium. You heard it here first. Fuck that. That clown is current. Are we? Are we kidding? He ain't convincing anybody to stop doing drugs. Yeah, he's Man. high before every shoot. I guarantee it. That's the guy that I meet every time I do DMT. I swear to God, it is. That's right. He's got the pin on him, right? Pushing that shit. Everything. Come on, you really like this one. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Seriously, that. The the whole dare thing. God, I want to talk some shit, but I don't want to like. <laughs> Wait a minute, man. <laughs> I like this one right here, man. Uh, I mean, what a fucking up joke. Now, <laughs> <laughs> That's so dare Bill and I have been eating roast beef sandwiches and Kewpie for the last six months together, man. That's right. That guy. Looks like he was would have been raised by iPads, but in the eighties. <clears throat> like he he's the guy from what's that what's that kids cartoon show with the little girl and the dude with the big hair and he reminds me of that Nickelodeon current. show. Oh, a current show? I wouldn't know that one. No, it's not current. It's like probably twenty years old. If it's point. post Bugs Bunny. I'm not hip to it. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. Lazy Town. Thank you. Yeah, I was not going to get lazy. Thank you. Bad, bad attitude. My kids watch Lazy Town. Yeah. And I remember having nightmares because I, I took some drugs that like made me uh, have weird dreams. And I would like wake up to make sure my kids were okay. And then I would fall back asleep on the couch and go into these crazy nightmares from whatever was on the TV at the time. And like mm -hmm. the lazy town one was very memorable. That one in, in uh, Rocket Power or whatever, where they're like the surfer kids. No, I wasn't doing recreational drugs. This was like I had some crazy muscle spasms, and the drugs that I, that that they gave me to stop the spasms knocked me out and made me have weird dreams. So your shit was better than the weed, dude. It was those <laughs> drugs were so scary that like I didn't finish the prescription. Like wow. as soon as like every time the drug would wear off, I would test myself to see like did the spasm mean stop? Because I don't want to take wow. this ever again. <laughs> like I don't want wow. to take this medicine. 
they were that bad. Yeah. Fuck that, man. Fuck yeah. That. It was scary. It sucked. All right. So let me get this straight. This is current. Like they're rolling this shit out now. Like they expect kids to respond to their bill like that. Is that what's going on? Dude, they're fucking delusional if they think that kids are going to respond to that. Yeah, I mean, we'll all have fun laughing. At it. That's about uh, it'd be a good comedy opening comedy act or something or something. I mean, maybe kids in Kentucky or something, but dude, right. like they they need right. to go somewhere where it's a little more cannabis forward and and get a glimpse of reality because right. kids in California are comfortable around cannabis because cannabis is everywhere, right? Totally hear you, man. Yeah, that whole raise them to abstain is, in my opinion, uh, not the healthiest way to be raised. So, uh, you know, I, I I went the opposite. You know, I was raised on that dare shit, you know, told to, you know, just say no is what I remember a, sh a shit ton of. And yeah. uh, when it came time for me to raise my youngins, I was more about, wanting to guide them through it myself rather than make them not do it like they're not going to do it so i mean at some point in time they're going to do it or be around it would it not be better that they had someone who showed them how to appropriately work through the situation you know what i mean like right rather than making it this big taboo thing where yeah like if a kid gets high they're paranoid that the parents gonna find out because it's so taboo and can't right. talk about it and yeah, that's so stupid. No. Make, trying to trying to push that shit. No, no. Yeah. That's, that's trying to move backwards. That is some backwards ass shit. <laughs> like I'm cool if they want to go out there and be like, "Hey, don't do heroin, don't do cocaine, don't do crack." That's cool. Don't don't fucking binge drink alcohol. You know, have some precautions when you when you use recreational drugs. Like uh, an updated version of Dare would be fine, but going out there and and waving all that like straight edge shit is just not forward thinking, really. But yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be Vivana's next next uh, Instagram reel is <laughs> some parody of that shit, right? All right, son, that's how you do a preheat on screwball. <laughs> 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 that's funny, man. Uh, you know, you know, uh, dude, that was, that was, that was lesson number fucking one, bro, was if you're going to mess with this thing, do yourself a favor, hit me up for a vape. Don't smoke it. You know what I mean? So what the fuck? Am I going to try to have them ignore it? If, if I don't, if I don't teach them, they're going to go smoke because that's what's available to them. That's what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 to, to not engage with kids in situations is, is mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's wise. So. Yeah, I, I told my daughter uh, she's welcome to try anytime with me if she wants to or to ask about it. Uh, if her friends start bringing it around and she wants me to explain it before her friends, happy to. Like I told her, like, look, like I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I'm a bit of a subject matter expert on right. in, in this field. So, like, Daddy's passionate about this topic, and Daddy knows everything, or, not, or he tries to know everything that he can. Right. So, like, happy to point you in the right direction when when it's that time. And uh, she's she hasn't really shown any interest. Was what's my my favorite thing is is when she said to me when she when she learned she's like when she can when I confirmed that I was like all cannabis and stuff and, and growing it and uh she said she's like now that i know that the smell i smell it everywhere <laughs> she's like i smell right. it everywhere i smell it on people at school i smell it at people at the store at the mall i smell it at and at whatever you know and then she'll, she's like she'll come back from uh that that park at in uh buena vista the uh berry farms not berry farms she came back from there and she's like everybody smelled like weed there <laughs> <laughs> that's right man it's all over the street that's great yeah yeah no doubt once you know 
I think, I think at I least know. one of my kids just thought that's the way I smelled. Like that was dad's smell. They didn't that was dad's know smell. that it was weed. Somebody had to, somebody had to tell them it was weed or I was going to tell them it was weed, but otherwise it was just my cologne or my breath or something. <laughs> Remember everybody, everybody that I went to school with would spray their fucking coats with cologne, like their coats with coat with their coat, their fucking starter jackets would just reek of cologne because they thought that it would like cover up the the smell of the smoke. Just made it worse, bro. Right. <laughs> I got I got two strong smells coming at me. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Oh, that's great. Uh, all right jerry i'm fucking stoned hungry hey, jerry, man right on i hear you we'll wrap it up hey i will say all you guys that are still here um uh plan the vape sponsors the 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 show here and uh for the starting next thursday and probably for a good month i'm gonna stream over there during the day like i usually do on their channel and we'll give away shit every time so you know me if i'm giving a shit away i want you guys to get it so if you're around uh 4 20 eastern on thursday for the next four or five weeks come over and win some vapes man it'll be fun there you go what kind of vapes are you giving away lobos uh definitely lobos the first i i, I we the only thing we talked about is this coming thursday will be i think two lobos um and usually the lobos come with glass and probably a, a dosing capsule with it with the with the caddy and all that shit so um they're usually oh. jacked up little package so i know that's the first first one but then after that i'm not sure if it's the same or more because it's you know we're going to run a, we're basically we'll, we'll do content for 420 and so we'll feature different vapes and, and give might give away different vapes but probably give away a lot of lobos so uh yeah there you go, nice man. Yeah, yeah. uh do you want to talk about the melty venti real quick do you want to do that now or do you want to run off and eat i mean Turned my vape back on. My vape turned off a while ago, and I was like, "Fuck!" So I got sad. Just, and I turned it back yeah. on. So are we about to do another bowl? I mean, yeah. If we're about to do another bowl, then throw up, throw up some venti, something to look at, or are we just gonna? Yeah, there we go. Emily's on it, man. Two reported so, publicly. Gotcha. Yeah. So the first guy posted his to Reddit. This Ingen guy. Uh, I made a video about it. I, so the the thing is, when the, when the guy posted it to Reddit, he said that um, when he when he sent the pictures of stores and Bickle warranty, uh, they just sent him a link to like the RMA thing, and he had to like pay to ship his thing in. But now, well, I I made a video about it, pointing it out, and uh, now it's been updated so like they've, they're supposedly sending him a shipping label mm -hmm. but there's been two so some after my after i made my video a second person stepped forward and said that they had the same thing and here's the pictures here this is the second guy was this already out there or is this somebody that's new now the since this yours? this one wasn't out there this guy okay. this guy left a comment on my youtube video saying that there the the peak plastic along the top there has melted Mm. Yeah, and then the heater got too hot. Or run away got way too there. hot. Yeah, yeah, something's wrong for sure. There. But yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. There's been two. <clears throat> hmm. That's interesting. You know, I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, you name a manufacturer, and I'm sure it's happened to them. So, uh, you know, it's um. <laughs> it's it's really uh there you go it's uh for me again it's it's you know it's kind of like um you know how, how widespread is it and so um if there's only two then they can pretty quickly tighten that little loop you know what i mean um yeah so that i did the math on if it was like fifty thousand, if they if they put pushed out i'm still laughing at the fucking exploding on a baby right oh, damn it <laughs> uh if they put out like fifty thousand. The percentage is like point zero zero four percent fail rate with two. If we right. assume that it's like if there's twenty more, then it's, uh, it moves to like point zero four percent, which is still really low. It's a really low, crazy low amount of these happenings. 
it's still alarming to see like the whole melty shit and i definitely don't want that happening so i like i would like to know like what caused this to happen like there should be some fail safe you know like thermal protection i don't know yeah it's wild it's usually usually some kind of i mean it comes down to some kind of defective part you know but uh you know we, well, i mean look we were there i mean we've seen how they test things they're they're pretty fucking thorough so either i'm surprised it happened at all or that's why there's only two <laughs> <laughs> but but i'm i'm surprised that it kind of happens at all given the way they test things but you know you can't catch every 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 hey, fault, you know what I mean? oh that's fucking funny yeah, <laughs> Dude. yeah. That's hilarious that's great classic well so that is actually out there um there again, may be I, more like there may be more that come forward we don't be. know like it, right. this could evolve into a whole new recall or it could just be like pfft, dust in the wind you know the two and yeah. that was it or maybe there's going to be two of these every year we don't know that'll give you yeah. a little tickle for sure like I, yeah mm. definitely don't inhale that shit like there, right. there's got to be some sort of warning like some sort of like if if this happens, there needs to be something other than like the little blue smoke that you may see. Like imagine this happening with your shit loaded and your stone with your friends, and you you take a big whiff of melty plastic. Oh my god! Yeah, like were these while it was in use, or was it charging, or what? Where did this happen? The in, first in, one. Yeah. So the one that posted to Reddit said that he loaded his bowl turned it on, set it on the shelf, and then 90 seconds later grabbed it, looked up, and it was still blue to indicate Maybe. that it was heating. Oh, okay. And he picked it up, and it was smoking, and the melted plastic stuck on his finger. It melted his finger, touched his finger or something. So. Uh, I'd like to see more about that. I mean, that that's alarming, yeah. but also... I mean, I mean, are we talking damage here? Or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I'd, I'd have to see that to confirm it. I would oh, want confirmation. He's in. That, the, yeah. He's in the chat. Mon, mon opinion. That's your. You're the, you're the guy on Reddit. You're um sorry in in Gen. I believe your username was on Reddit. Or the second one. Oh yeah, far out. Oh shit, I've been preheating on my freaking bowl. Damn. Take a look at it first, man. You might we might be dabbing out here if you <laughs> when we're doing it. Let me join you, man. Cheers, guys. Oh god, jeez. Oh my god. Oh, what a funky taste. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah, you and all coffee the frowns. On the news. That, they're programmed that. God. <laughs> yeah. Well, every time they recall Venti's, I have to brick or send in a perfectly good unit. So, no. Um, you know, I'll be sad. I'm still using mine. Yeah. I've got a couple here that, yeah. I've got them. Well, one, I, I'm, I'm keeping my new one in for, for content, but, you know, he said the fault of Andy. No, uh -uh. that's funny. Oh, man. I just had an idea of a really cool tattoo. Are you going to share it or are we going to sign off with that? <laughs> you could it be an elbow tattoo with like a, a mouth mask type thing, making the whole whole arm look like a, a mask. And then down here it could be like written know. so you can read it like the fart monster. Because then like <laughs> when you're funny. in that... 
You can be making fart noises and you can have your oh, tattooed mascot. Be awesome. There's your boy Moan opinion. Yeah, good. Then then definitely send it in and send it in quickly. Like if that's a legit fault, then they need to see it right away. As soon as they see it, they can find the problem. And especially a company like that, like they're on they 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 assemble all their shit themselves. So he said they don't want the defective. Oh, he says they don't want it. Um maybe they already know what's up then they've they've already got one that's already done it and they know what's up or something i don't know maybe they already figured it out or maybe that was part of what they wanted everybody did you brick yours or did were you were you ever told to brick yours and then didn't or is this one that replaced a brick one or did you show up after the bricking issues because if this was one of the very first ones or at least it was in that first wave that they asked everybody to brick that might have been what they were worried about actually happening. You know what I mean? That's true. That's what it was, Sean. I forgot. You're right. That's what it was. They wanted people to brick them. Well, they wanted people to brick them so they could ship them. That's why they were saying brick them to ship them. But this might have been what the problem was in the beginning, and they already know. Yeah, milk. That's what I'm saying. If they don't want it, then they know what's up. Because they didn't want mine. They just want me to brick it. I'm like, fuck, man. It's working great. Yeah, brick it. <laughs> we'll send you another one. <laughs> Fuck. Because not many of them were fucking up to begin with. <clears throat> yep. Yep, I did that. Yeah, you did. Yep. I don't think Jerry saw it. That's okay. What'd you did? Nothing. Nothing? We're talking about nothing, nothing here? Yeah, have to watch the replay, man. All right. Let's back it up. <laughs> Let me get, my, get the instant replay. Let me hit my 30 second back button. Oh, I don't bro, know why. I did. Lips. Does it hurt? Does it it hurt? kinda hurts, yeah. Did you put the head to your lips? Is that what you did? Not the head, the bowl. <laughs> the joint. After you used it, it like it was hot. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I, things can get hot. I, I emptied it and there was a little bit of DCB around the edges and I'm like, oh, I'll just put it to my lips and whoosh, give it a quick blow, you know? Oh, no, no, no. That shit was like, whoa. It was fucking hot, yo. I, I've been real close to that. Like, I've just like I've just brushed it and was like, oh, oh no. That can hurt. And the lips, man, those are sensitive. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a sign to, to wrap it up. That's probably that's probably a good sign there. When we're starting to show off our gums. <clears throat> <laughs> Something I'm not gonna do. Nobody wants to see wrap it up, Jerry. Yeah, man. Yeah, we so anyhow, have... we'll wrap it up. So you guys in the chat are awesome, man. Thanks for hanging. Uh we'll be around next week. And like I said, come win some vapes on Thursdays. And um we've already got a great we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a good time next. They've got a great topic next week, and uh, might 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 be a while. So bring a lot, oh, bring a lot yeah, of cannabis. Yeah, next, one. next week's a fun strap, one. Strap in, bring a lot of cannabis. Yeah, strap on. <laughs> what? what do you? Yeah, yeah. Bring, get your cannabis and bring a lot of strap on. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Next Friday. See you soon. Yeah. Pizza. pizza.